Hello and welcome. My name is Paul Dudley and I work for the State of Tennessee Finance and Administration, STSGIS Services. And today I'm going to introduce you to Tennessee's LiDAR data. In this video, I'm going to cover Tennessee's USGS partnership and the 3D Elevation Program. I'm going to introduce you to LiDAR data, talk about accuracy information and the 3DEP data in particular. I'm going to cover delivered products and some of the common use cases, as well as common softwares used for manipulating this data. And finally, data access on where to download. Tennessee has been partnered with USGS since 2015 and the 27 County Project. By 2020, we should have statewide coverage of QL2 LiDAR data. Contracts and projects are funded through state, federal, and local governments. What this means is that the data is in the public domain and can be accessed by everyone. Current coverage maps are available at tnmap.tn.gov or on the USGS website. So what is LiDAR? LiDAR is light detection and ranging. A three-dimensional point cloud is created by a laser scanner. In the case of the 3 depth data, the laser scanner is mounted on the bottom of an aircraft. And that scanner emits laser pulses, and those pulses come in contact with objects, and then are reflected back to the sensor. And since we know the XYZ location of the sensor using GPS technology, we're able to figure out the X, Y, and Z of the objects those pulses came in contact with. Something important to know about LiDAR data is returns. As the laser travels from the sensor, it is reflected and returned back multiple times. In the example on the right, we have an area of high vegetation. We have a tree canopy starting from the top, understory, and finally the ground. As the laser is emitted from the scanner, the first thing it comes in contact in this example is the tree canopy and is then reflected back and is measured as a first return. Now a portion of that pulse may continue down through the understory and finally be reflected back to the sensor. And that would be a second return. And could it go on three, four, fifth, six, seven, you know, all the way down uh, in this example is going to seven to finally hit the ground. Some things to note is that this data is typically captured during the winter and at night. The reason it's captured during the winter is you have leaf off conditions because vegetation has a negative effect on accuracy. The higher the vegetation is, the more returns you have, the harder it is for that pulse to finally make it to the ground. Here's some information about the QL2 LiDAR data that's delivered to us. It is collected using the USGS base specifications, which is a lengthy document that has specifications that this data must meet before it is delivered. And our data is quality level two or QL2 and what that means is that we have two points per square meter or better. And then we also have a nominal pulse spacing of 2.3 feet or less. What are the deliverables? We get a classified LAS point cloud file, a bare earth hydro flattened digital elevation model or DEM, building footprints, a tile index, intensity imagery, and some metadata. Here's an accuracy table taken from the LiDAR base specification table. We have a root mean square error or RMSE and that's an accuracy measurement between the ground and the point cloud and that is 3.9 inches in a non-vegetated area. We also have another measurement non-vegetated accuracy at a 95% confidence level and what that means is that they're 95% confident, confident that within 7.7 inches our data falls. Here we have the digital elevation model vertical accuracy table from the base specifications. As you can see, the root mean square error and the non-vegetated at 95% are the same, 3.9 and 7.7. .7. But they've added a vegetated vertical accuracy, so an area where you have high vegetation. And that goes all the way up to 11.6 inches. So you can see the negative effect that vegetation has on accuracy. And this is a slide that is kind of introductory. 
We're going to talk about each product and their use cases. So we're going to talk about point cloud files, DEMs, DSMs, intensity imagery, and contours. So the first one, the point cloud. The point cloud is delivered to us in a .las format. It is broken into tiles, each flight area is, as you can see in the example above Chattanooga. One three depth tile is one square mile. To save space, STSGIS utilizes an Esri ZLAS format. So if you download the data from us in the point cloud, you will get a .zlas file. And the reason we do that is because as you can see in the example on the four tiles, we go from 1.63 gigs all the way down to 400 megabytes. So this saves a lot of space. But if you're downloading this and you need to use it in a .las format, you'll have to go and download the Esri LAS optimizer to uncompress it. And it's a free software download. If you search in a browser, Esri LAS optimizer, it should be an easy find and you just input your ZLAS files and output to a .las. One last thing to cover about the point cloud is classification. Classification are where points are identified as features. And with our 3 depth data, um, the, they were classified to a minimum point cloud classification scheme per the table on the right. But we also had buildings classified, and those are classification code six. In the example on the bottom left, you can see that the trees are not classified as vegetation. They're unclassified because that is not in the minimum classified point scheme. Well, so now let's cover the products and the use cases for the point cloud. You can create the derivatives listed, the DEM, the DSM, contours, but you can also create triangulated irregular networks or TINs, which is a surface generated from the points. You can do elevation and distance measurement, 3D visualization, ground control georeferencing, geo vegetation density estimation, and automated feature extraction. Here are two examples of some point cloud visualization. Here I'm using the vertical measurement tool in Arc Pro to measure the height of this bluff. And the image on the right is a colorized point cloud for 3D visualization using a T-dot ortho. Our next product is the Digital Elevation Model, or DEM. A DEM is a raster surface representing the elevation of a terrain, and in our case, bare earth, ground surface. The image on the left is just a grayscale image. When you typically bring it into any soft mapping software, this is what you're going to see. If you clicked on one of the pixels and identified the information that that pixel has, it would be an elevation value. The image on the right is a hill shaded elevation model, which basically shows the terrain. Our DEMs are two and a half feet by two and a half feet for their cell size. All bridges are removed and the DEMs are hydro flattened, which means that water bodies that are greater than two acres and rivers that are greater than 100 feet in width are flattened to a common elevation. Some data and 3 depth data is not hydro-enforced, and that would be a DEM with elevation of non-natural obstructions adjusted for downslope flow. And this would be important if you're doing any hydrologic modeling. So here on the example on the left, we have a culvert that was not taken out per USGS specifications, and bridges on the right that were taken out. So what are the DEM products? We have hillshade, slope, aspect, shaded relief, and you can also generate contours from the elevation models. The use cases include cartography base maps, landform and landscape analysis, viewshed analysis, which is where you pick a point, an XYZ location, and have the software spit out what pixels you can see from that location. And that's the example on the right on a hillshade DEM. You can also do hydrologic analysis, extraction, watersheds, and hydrologic modeling, planning and construction, hazard prediction, and volumetric analysis. The next product is a digital surface model. And it is a raster surface representing the elevation of a terrain that typically includes all features when you're talking about LIDAR data. And that's the first return in this case. This was generated using 
the ArcMap LAS to raster geoprocessing tool and using the first return. So you can see vegetation, buildings, power lines. What are the products and use cases for the DSM? Well, you can use it for cartography, base maps, view shed visual anal analysis, raster subtraction, taking the DSM and subtracting that height from the ground to get a vegetation height or building height or feature height. You can also do right of way or power line corridor mapping and feature extraction. LiDAR intensity return imagery is a raster that is created by the reflectivity measurements from the point cloud and can be considered kind of a pseudo ortho photo. Use cases include land use classification and purpose surface delineation, georeferencing, and feature extraction. Contours are the last product we're going to discuss. They can be generated multiple ways or rendered on the fly directly from the point cloud. Accuracy is obviously dependent on the quality level of the data. And that translates to our data to being a two-foot contour capability with the QL2 data. You can certainly generate a one-foot contour, but it may not meet your accuracy needs. Products and use cases include cartography base maps, visual analysis, and the largest being planning and construction. Common softwares that are used to manipulate this data are Esri products, ArcGIS Pro, ArcMap, ArcGIS Online, QGIS, which is an open source, free download, GeoQ LP360 software, and they also have an Esri ArcMap extension, Autodesk AutoCAD 3D Mapper, Bentley MicroStation, Blue Marble Global Mapper, and many, many more. So typically LiDAR data is very large. And if you're doing lots of processing and 3D viewing, here are some basic requirements that may help you purchase your next computer. If you're a state or a federal employee, you may have to go off a contract to get, get this. So here we have some information on data access. You can go to tnmap.tn.gov and click the GIS data page and be able to download DEMs, LiDAR data, contours, brake lines, etc. You can also access the same data at the TNGIC data access site or tngis.org. Elevation services and data through the USGS, they have the national map where you can download single tiles. And they also have a web map service using the digital elevation models. And if you search USGS elevation map service, you'll be able to find this. Check for updated elevation services through STSGIS. And feedback is always welcomed. We want to improve this content and show what is most helpful to the users of the data. And the biggest thing is, please let us know your use cases. If this data is saving time and money, your use cases can build justification for future flights. My contact information is listed here below. And if you have any problems accessing the data, downloading the data, or have any general questions, please feel free to contact me.